I'm Roy from Drone School UK. Here is my summary video about the CAA proposed new drone rules in May 2025. In the document cap 3105 you see on your screen now, that contains 30 plus pages of changes to the rules and regulations. Now, this has been submitted by the CAA to the Department of Transport for approval. You can expect that to happen quickly because there are legal implications on this document that need to be in place by January 2026. So let's look at the key rules that will affect you both in a positive and a negative way. The key change is the description of airspace has been renamed. A1 is now flying over people. A2 is flying near people, and A3 is flying far from people, so it's over, near, and far. The CAA have also clarified the description of airspace under the A1, the A2, and the A3 category. On the A1, the key change is that they've included C1 drones allowed to fly over uninvolved people, and these C1 drones can be up to 900 grams including the Mavic 3 Classic, the Air 3, two DJI drones which are allowed to fly in the A1 category. Now A2, they've clarified the minimum horizontal distances. is not a bubble, but it's 50 meters from uninvolved people. And they've also said that it's a minimum of 50 meters from a single building. Now those single buildings, if you're looking at the A3 category, which was from residential, 150 metres from residential, commercial, industrial and recreational areas, if you're looking at a few buildings together, two, three, four buildings, they're not categorised as a residential area. So you have to stay a minimum of 50 metres from a couple of buildings if they're in a small cluster. The next change is drone registration and education. The start weight has been reduced from 250 grams to 100 grams with a camera. So if your drone is over 100 grams and has a camera, you will need to get a, both a flyer ID and an operator ID. The CAA are doing away with cap 722, so they're simplifying all of the drone documents and they're coming up with an acceptable means of compliance, so legislation, compliance, and guidelines will all be in one document. CAA are also asking for geo-awareness and geofencing from drone manufacturers. This is no issue with DJI because they've had a geofencing since 2016. You haven't been able to fly in flight-restricted zones in the UK, five kilometers from an airport, uh, 500 metres from prisons, over military establishments, power stations. These are all restricted. Next is the drone class markings. Now, we're going to introduce our own UK class markings rather than the current ESA European markings of C1, C2, C3 onwards. Now, we're going to call them UK1 instead of C1, UK2 instead of C2, and they'd be very similar to the C1, C2 specs, but it allows the CAA to vary them when they think it's needed or appropriate. The CAA will recognise the C1 labels for the two years from January 2026 in the regs to January 2028. The biggest change in the regs is the remote ID. CAA are calling for all drones over 100 grams with a camera to have remote ID. If you buy a new drone after January the 1st 2026 with the UK1 label for example it will have to have an active direct remote ID and all drones are to have direct remote ID from January the 1st 2028. So some DJI drones can submit transmit an, a remote ID with a small software upgrade using the firmware and other drones will have to have some form of transmitting remote ID attached to it, normally adding between 12 and 14 grams to the weight of the drone. Now that could push the drone over the 250 key drone weight. Looking at the remote ID, as I said earlier, you can have 
one attached to the drone or it can be a software upgrade. Now, so the CAA want a hybrid network. Um, that's a combination of a direct a remote ID and a network ID. But the system is expensive and no funding has been achieved or been promised so far. So that won't come in very quickly. Now, it'll be the direct remote ID that's used at first. So looking at that, you'll see the drone will transmit an unencrypted data like the drone unique number, um, location of the controller, telemetry like the speed, the height of the drone, the direction of travel, the distance from the controller, the location of the controller, and that's transmitted locally um, around your drone and can possibly be read by phone apps like Open Drone ID that you see on the screen here. But on average, the broadcast distances will vary probably up to about five kilometers. And the network type of um, ID would collect all that drone data and that could be harvested and be accessed via an, a, an API uh, to a third party. But that's a way off. Now, remote ID was implemented in the US in April 2024, but it's for drones over 250 grams. And you can look on the USA FAA website for DJI drones that have their direct remote ID approved. This is normally a software upgrade. And the final rule change is that the CAA will require a flashing or strobe light for any night flying. These can be attached easily to most drones. They weigh about nine grams. They cost about 14 pounds. So that's the end of the CAA rule changes for 2025. They should be coming in shortly. If there's any changes, I'll keep you posted on the videos. Bye for now and happy flying. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to the channel or watch the next video in the playlist or the new videos that we've just recently downloaded.